Good morning, how's everybody doing? Or oh, good afternoon, good evening, whatever you're doing tonight. Uh, this little video that I am doing on painting this bird is for one of my students, Brenda, who um, wanted to paint this on some of the, um, the supplies that I had um, sold to her at one of the classes, and the video for some reason went on to uh, YouTube and somehow it didn't look good. I don't know what happened. So we're doing this video all over again and I'm painting it from scratch. So it may be a little tad different from the original, but uh, what I did is I'm going to paint this on uh, paper, which is scrapbook paper, eight by 10, and then we're gonna adhere it to a canvas board, right? And the materials that we're going to use today are going to be all golden paints. And this one is going to be cobalt blue, cad orange, Hansa yellow, and quid nickel azel. Okay. And titanium white. Always titanium white. And to adhere some of the papers to our uh, surface, I'm going to use soft gel gloss. You can use soft gel matte. Um, I grabbed this one because it was the one sitting on my table, but it doesn't matter. For brushes, I'm going to use a ruby satin filbert, size 10. And we're going to paint this what I call dry painting. So you're not going to really put water into this because it will make your paper kind of buckle up and tear up. So first thing I did was I took a piece of scrapbook paper and I did some rubber stamping here of the leaves. And if you notice, some of them are real opaque, some of them are not. Uh, that just, you know, when you put them on there, don't try to make them all even, just, just gives them a little bit of a flare. And then I have these little papers in my studio. So this is um, like a, they call it Mayberry, mulberry paper. And the good thing about this paper is that when you wet the edges and it rips, it gives you little, filaments coming out so I'm just going to take a little piece of that and let me wet the edge here and it's cool when you can put it on your painting because once the paint goes on it then it looks like all these little fibers are coming out so I'm just going to lay it down right now I'm not sure where I'm going to put it yet and then this is one that was white and I just had some extra yellow paint left over and this paper is a little thicker as you can see um, so I decided why not put it on the paper and see what happens so you and I will see what happens together at the same time so it will be a mystery for all of us so I'm gonna rip this again rip this and see how those little hairs come out I love that for texture and so I think I'm gonna cut that one right here and maybe I can put it in the center here somewhere. Let's see, cut it a little bit smaller. And that one could be my little seeds maybe coming out right there. Okay. And then I have this tissue paper. And what I did is I stamped a little design on it. So it doesn't have to be a perfect uh, item. You can literally cut it in half and double-sided, you know, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to take straight from the jar my um, soft gel, and you don't really need a lot of this soft gel to put on there. See, I just have a little bit of it, and I think I'm gonna put it up here to, um, maybe even in the bird's body, what do you think? No, let's put it up here. So I'm gonna put it up here, and I'm just gonna lay it down, and then brush it out. And the little leaf is showing through, which is what I like. Then for the little yellow, I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that and put it right here in the center. That's where our seeds are going to be. And I'm going to put that right there. You know, you can make feathers with this. Um, anything like that. Just your imagination is in control here. So for this one, I can maybe put this one sideways, maybe overlap the tissue. What do you think? Nah, let's, let's give them a separate little spot. I'm gonna put some of that right here. <clears throat> I 
and lay it down. Don't worry if it wrinkles. Now, I could have stamped this design straight onto my paper, but um, I think with the paper on it, it gives it a little bit more texture, and we can always do a wash of color on it when we're done. So I'm not even going to rinse my brush in my water because with the medium on it, it will help me make my paint move a little bit better. So I'm going to go straight into my yellow paint, and I'm just going to load one side of it. Pretty heavy, see that? And I am going to follow the little shape of the body here. And I'm going to be careful not to cover the eye. And pick up a little bit more yellow. And all I'm doing is almost like coloring book painting. Just putting my color in back and forth. And try not to go and litter areas like this and go 20 times over it. Because what happens is your paper's going to get... And you see this little bump there? I'm going to leave it. That looks like a feather right there, so I'm not going to worry about it. Now I'm going to take the feathers underneath and I'm going to push up and give my feathers... a little shape and he has a little leg standing here so I am going to cover that now again I'm not rinsing my brush and I really like the different shades on here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna darken a little bit over here for his face so I will take a little bit of that nickel azo and see how I'm just pulling a little bit from the side I haven't put any water in my brush and I am just gonna come right here and I'm barely touching my paper see that I'm going to make this a wing and I'm moving my brush pretty fast because I don't want to hang out in one little area too long and let's put a little bit over his eye ah, don't worry about that okay now, I'm going to add some of this little caddy yellow, uh, orange on here and to my brush and a little bit of this um, nickel azo. And it, what it does is it tones down that bright orange. And I'm just going to give him a little bit of that over the brown and around his eye just to highlight the eye a little bit. And I'm just letting it sit. Okay, the other area we want to separate is here. We have another feather. So I'm taking a little bit of that paint and I'm going to go on top of the feathers here and just easy strokes underneath his little belly. There should be a little bit more brown. So I'm putting that on here. And see, you don't even need water to do this. I mean, this is like so cool to do. And I like these little feathers here, and I don't want to mess it up, so I'm just going to put a little bit of that brown here. And I'm going to put a little white there to highlight it a little bit. And under his wings here, I will pick up a little bit of this brown and a little bit of that yellow and make another color here, like an orangey yellow. And right underneath his feathers here, I am going to go right on there and push that paint down to highlight it. And if you notice here, there's not much to the body. So just leave it, don't, don't try to make it too perfect. I'm going to uh, put a little bit of this yellow on my brush, I mean white. They always get the colors confused, right? Yellow here, white here. <laughs> I can tell the colors apart, that's for sure. Okay. So now that this is a, a bright yellow, and if you notice, my brush is getting really heavy with paint, I am going to just rub it on my paper towel very softly, and I'm going to highlight the top of his head, right? And maybe the top of his wing here. Okay. And maybe this little tail feather here. Oh, and he has another little leg back there, so we'll just put that there. Okay, so for right now, I'm going to leave my bird alone. I don't want to keep putting more stuff on it. We all tend to overdo it, right? And we'll come back later and put the eye in the beak. 
Now I'm gonna rinse my brush out completely. Tap it on my paper towel. Never, never scrub your brushes on your paper towel. Tap it. Because what you do is, if you go like this, I've seen a lot of you do that. Number one, you're gonna ruin your brush and you got all your moisture out of it. So just wet it and tap it. And I have this, I, I just love this color. It's a cobalt blue, but it's such a bright color. I will take a little bit of that and put it to the side of my plate and a little bit of my white because I want to tone it down a little bit so that when I shade, I use the same color blue and I'm not introducing a new color, right? So let me put my plate here. I have to paint sideways. Since I have an oval brush, I will follow the little shape of my bowl right here. And I will hold my brush straight. And without pressing very hard, I am going to make the little lip of this bowl in my light blue. And then he has this little lip coming around the side here. So um, I will come back here and trace that. He has a little bit going this way and a little bit coming out over here, right? That's part of the bowl. Now the bottom part of this, I'm gonna leave this white for now, and, or I'm not saying white, no paint on it, and put a little blue on here. So that part is gonna be a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. So I will go at my oval here on the edge and then just press my brush very softly and let the brush create your stroke work. See that? Let the brush pick up a little bit more of the blue on the side here. I'm gonna turn my paper around again and come here right next to that wing and meet in the middle somewhere. And I'm leaving it alone. Come down here and paint that. And come here, let me turn it around, pick up a little bit more of the blue paint, and finish that blue up. I'm not even gonna finish the bowl, because you should imagine that there's a bowl right there. Now, since we have the white on the top, we don't want it to be that solid white. I'm gonna put a little bit of my dark blue, my cobalt blue, right in here so that we can have a little contrast and you can actually see that there's some little fibers in there. And I'm gonna stop it right there. And I'm also, see here where the bowl turns around? I want to just very softly trace a little bit of that onto here so that it shows where the bowl is turning. And here's the lip. See the lip right here? That's what you want. Again, I'm gonna pick up some of my white and I'm gonna put this in a different side of my paper plate. Now this white, if you notice, in the blue are a little bit lighter toned than that, right? So you can't, I always suggest go into a little separate area on your plate so that you don't get your colors a little bit confused. So from just two colors, we have gotten three different values, right? So I will put a little bit of that color and it's just the right width of my brush. So I'm going to just press on it, a little bit too light for my taste. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white. And Brenda, I hope you're following this and you're enjoying this video. And again, I have no idea what happened, but I want to see a picture of yours when you finish it, okay? And then you come over here to the other side and do the same thing. And make sure that they match right here so that there's no lip, right? And we want to darken a little bit these areas here, right? So I will rinse my brush again completely. And this is straight cobalt blue, no other color in here. 
And what I want to do is, let me see if you show it here in the camera, close up. There we go. I will go right under that bowl right here. And by doing a zigzag motion, see that? It has changed colors a little bit. And all I'm going to do is take whatever is left here on my brush and move it around this area. Pick up a little bit more. When you see that you're running out of paint, don't force your brush. Pick up a little bit more. You got paint on your palette, use it. And I will also brush a little bit of that on there so that it's not so solid. This here is part of the little lake of the bird. So I will pick up a little yellow and a little bit of that nickel azel. And I'm just gonna paint them on here. You know that it's a foot. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. And here, I forgot to put a little bit of that blue and white mixture. So I will come back to the original one, put a little bit more of the white in there and cover this here. Cause we don't care what this side looks like here. This is just to give you an idea that this is a bowl, right? And here we have the little lip of um, the opening of the bowl. So I'm gonna make this a little darker. I think on my original painting, I did it with, um, with brown maybe, who knows? But um, you get the idea, right? So I'm just darkening this and just rubbing my finger on it to smooth it out. And do the same thing here and leave it alone. Now, these little seeds, right? We made those, we, we decided that those were gonna be seeds. Take the little nickel azel yellow, nickel azel yellow, and I am just gonna tap my brush in there. And you can tell these are little seeds, right? Birdie came home to eat. The next brush I'm going to use is this Silver Ultra Mini, and it's a size 8. And I love these little brushes. They, they almost feel like a pencil on your hand, but they hold a lot of paint, and the little tip is very long, which is great for detail work. So we know that we have a beak here, right? And if I, I, I can paint um, the beak using this brush, but I want to show you how to use it with a smaller brush. So I'm just gonna wet my brush first and tap it on my paper towel. And I will pick up a little bit of this nickel azel yellow and pick a little side here. See how cool this brush is? Do the little beak and It will come right up here. And join this right here. And just open up that beak a little bit. Because he's holding something in his mouth. We don't know what it is, but he's holding something, right? For the eyes, we left the little center open. So when I do the eyes, what I try to do is don't try to draw an eye per se. Just kind of fill it in, right? Make it as big or small as you want. And to darken it, pick up a little bit of the blue and mix it in there and see how dark that becomes. You don't need to have a black eye. So I will just put a little bit of that color in there and it looks like I shaded it. Okay. I will go back to my um, Ruby Set and Filbert, the number 10. And this guy is almost done. He's coming along. So I will take my nickel azel again. And that little dark area here almost looks like a dark brown, doesn't it? When you mix it with that color. So I want this area here just to be a tad darker. So I will pick up 
that color right here. Let me tap it on my paper towel. It was a little bit too wet. And I'm rubbing it on here to give them all these little wings, all these little feathers, right? Go over the top of his little head very softly and put some more of that color on there. And I'm only tapping it. See how I'm not even painting it? I'm just tapping it on there because I want this little guy to be as cute as he can be. And by going back this way, what you're doing is you're creating texture. See that? Let's shade this little guy right here. There you go. Now, the only thing left to do is, let me just wet this a little bit here. Um, oh, I forgot that little wing there. Not paying attention. So I will come here and darken that out. Move up. There we go. Come here and darken that out and just walk it out. Now, next thing I'm going to use is um, Ultra. Let me get this little piece of paper off of here. I have this Ultra Fine Sharpie. And when your paint is really, really dry, don't use it when it's wet or you'll kill your pen. Come and outline it. And what it's going to do, it's going to um, make this thing pop. But I don't want you to draw it on. I want you to loosen up your hand and almost scribbling. I will take the little wings here and scribble, 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 right? Here's his little leg, scribble, and we know he has a little foot here somewhere. You don't need to make that really permanent. And here we know he has some wings, and all I'm doing is zigzag. See my hand movement? Zigzag, zigzag. And you don't have to make this really strong, just enough that you know you have some wings. So I call this reverse pen and ink. And um, for those of you who have taken some of my classes, you know that I love pen and ink. It's one of the first things I learned how to paint. And I do pen and ink in so many different ways. But let's round this little guy here and take the ball sideways. And I will come on the outside because I want you to see those little lines. And on the bottom here, let's zigzag the, sh the shadow, right? He's got a little shade there from the sun coming through from underneath here. See, I'm not really like going over this. Oh yeah, this is the bowl. Okay. Now here, we have to shade this, right? But first, I'm going to take a little bit of this white with my really fine brush here, and I very, very softly come here and do a little highlight, and maybe a little dot. Now his little eye is coming through. To shade this, let's use again the mixed up, mix, mixture. Oh, that was a tongue twister. Mixture. It's Friday. I've been painting all week. And tomorrow I have a class. So I'm getting ready for that too. Okay, so here's your dark color. Now my brush is wet. I didn't really tap it really hard on my paper towel, right? So I will see how dark that is. Not dark enough for my taste. Come back. Pick up your nickel. And a little bit of maybe that color. Let's see. Ah, much better. Okay, so now you did your bottom here. That's your shade. Don't forget to sign it. And he is done. Now I think on my original uh, painting, this, this little feathers came out a little further. So if that happens, I have a solution for you. Just come here and just extend this a little bit further out 
and take in nickel, azo, yellow, and come back with a little bit of shading. And you don't even need to pen and ink this area. You're letting people know, yeah, 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 he has wings over there. I know that. Okay. Last but not least, you're going to want to glue this to your canvas, right? So that it looks something like this. You can take um, music paper or anything. It doesn't matter. So I'm not going to glue it, but I'm going to show you how to do it. What you're going to do is you're going to take a blank canvas and you will take your soft gel, put your brush in it. Let me make sure it's clean. And you're going to take a nice big glob of this and put it in the middle of your canvas and you're going to walk it out so that it's nice and flat all over. When you go to glue it on here, you're going to glue it from the center, hold it with your finger and just bring it out, bring it out, bring it out so that it's flat, right? I put a book on it when I have really thick paper on it, but make sure that your painting is, is really dry. And if you're not sure, put a little bit of a um, zip log or something on it so that it's plastic and it doesn't stick to whatever surface you're putting on there. Um, and I would say this little guy is done. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me, chriscruzdesigns at gmail.com. And if you decide that you really like this little birdie and you see how simple he was to do, please share a picture with me. And if you like this video, give me a little thumbs up. I appreciate it and I have more videos to come. Enjoy your painting and I hope to see you at one of my classes soon. Thank you so much for watching.